Aerosol drug therapy is a type of treatment that uses a special device to deliver medication directly to the lungs in the form of a fine mist. This type of therapy is also sometimes referred to as inhalation therapy and can be used to treat a wide range of respiratory diseases. We created this video to provide a brief overview of this topic, and we will discuss how aerosols are used to treat respiratory conditions. So if you're ready, let's get into it. So what exactly is aerosol drug therapy? First and foremost, an aerosol is a suspension of fine particles dispersed in air or gas. They are generated by nebulizers and inhalers which break up liquid or powder medications into particles small enough that can be inhaled into the lungs. This is known as aerosol drug therapy, which can be used to treat a wide variety of respiratory conditions, including asthma, COPD, bronchitis, and cystic fibrosis. The primary goal of aerosol drug therapy is to deliver a dose of a specific drug to the lungs in order to achieve a therapeutic effect. The effectiveness of aerosol therapy depends on several factors, including aerosol output, particle size, deposition, and delivery. Now let's talk about the different aerosol drug delivery systems. A specialized device is required to generate aerosols in order for this type of therapy to occur. There are three primary types of aerosol delivery systems, which are metered dose inhalers, dry powder inhalers, and nebulizers. There are pros, cons, advantages, and disadvantages of each type. The technique for drug delivery is also different for each device. First, let's talk about the metered dose inhaler, or MDI. A metered dose inhaler is a type of inhaler that uses a pressurized canister to deliver a specific amount of medication in aerosol form. The patient can activate the device while inhaling to receive a dose of the drug. One of the primary advantages of this type of inhaler is that they're portable and easy to use. They're also consistent in the amount of medication that is delivered with each inhalation. MDIs are the preferred aerosol delivery method for the maintenance delivery of bronchodilators and steroids in spontaneously breathing patients. However, they are highly technique dependent. This means that you must instruct the patient on how to properly use the device. Otherwise, they may not receive the full dose of the desired medication. To reduce oropharyngeal deposition and the need for hand-breath coordination, spacers and valved holding chambers can be used. They are accessory devices that attach to the inhaler and hold the medication in a chamber with one-way valves. This makes it easier for the patient to inhale the medication and reduces waste. Next, we have the dry powder inhaler or DPI. It is a breath actuated device that delivers aerosols in the form of fine powder particles that can reach the lungs by inhalation. Dry powder inhalers are advantageous because they do not require a propellant for use. In addition, the patient does not need hand breath coordination in order to receive a drug dose from this type of device. However, one of the primary disadvantages of dry powder inhalers is that their operation depends on turbulent flow and the patient's inspiratory flow rate. In other words, the patient must be able to perform a deep and fast inhalation in order to receive a drug dose from this device. And the third type of aerosol delivery system is a nebulizer. A nebulizer is a device that uses compressed air or ultrasonic waves to break up liquid into aerosol particles that can be inhaled into the lungs. It requires the use of a face mask or mouthpiece in order for the drug delivery to occur. Nebulizers are the preferred drug delivery method for patients who are unable to use an inhaler or for those who require high doses of medication. There are three primary types of nebulizers used in aerosol drug therapy, jet nebulizers, ultrasonic nebulizers, and vibrating mesh nebulizers. Each type has its own advantages and disadvantages. Jet nebulizers are the most common type. This includes small volume nebulizers and large volume nebulizers, which are commonly used in the acute care setting. Ultrasonic nebulizers use a piezoelectric crystal to generate aerosol particles by converting electrical signals into high frequency vibrations. 
these have the ability to generate a higher aerosol output than jet nebulizers. Vibrating mesh nebulizers use a mesh with tiny holes that vibrate at a high frequency to produce aerosol particles. These have the advantage of being able to generate a consistent particle size and have a higher respirable fraction than jet nebulizers. So now let's talk about the hazards of aerosol drug therapy. Most of the hazards that occur when delivering aerosol drugs involve an adverse reaction to the medication that is being administered to the patient. However, some other hazards that can occur include infection, airway reactivity, pulmonary effects of the drug, systemic effects of the drug, eye irritation, and secondhand exposure. Infection can be avoided by using sterile equipment and techniques when administering aerosol drugs. Airway reactivity can be avoided by monitoring the patient closely during therapy. Adverse pulmonary and systemic effects of a drug can be minimized by using the proper dose and delivery method. Eye irritation can be avoided by using eye shields or by avoiding direct contact with the eyes. Secondhand exposure can be minimized by using ventilation systems and by avoiding close contact with others while administering aerosol drugs. As you can see, aerosol drug therapy is a very important subject, which is why you must develop an understanding of what it is, what conditions it's used to treat, the different types of inhalers and nebulizers, and when they're indicated or not in specific types of patients. This is a type of therapy that respiratory therapists are involved in on a daily basis, so it's probably a good idea to develop an understanding of this topic. Hopefully you can use this video along with other resources on our channel and website to make the learning process much easier. But again, for this video, we just wanted to provide you with a brief overview of this topic. We'll be diving deeper into each of the subtopics that were mentioned in separate videos. But real quick, if you don't mind, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. It really helps support the channel and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And you might as well go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this. Hopefully what you learned in this video was useful and can help you develop a better understanding of this topic. If so, be sure to let us know down in the comment section below. And if you want to learn even more, we do have a full guide on our website. I will drop a link to it right below this video down in the description. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have a blessed day and as always, breathe easy my friend.